Okay, good. Welcome to our Palm Sunday um, All Age Worship Service. It's the start of Holy Week, the week where we journey, final journey towards Easter and Easter Sunday. And today we'll be waving our palms and shouting Hosanna, probably. Um, and next week, next Easter Sunday, we'll be going, yes, Jesus is risen, but hopefully you might want to journey with us to the bit between, which is what Holy Week is all about as we journey with Jesus to the cross and beyond. And so there's various things going on this week to help us with that. There's a flyer at the back with your Holy Week and all your Easter, serv Easter Sunday services on it. So this evening at half past six, we'll be meeting for a very short, um, uh, not a very short service, um, a service of quiet, reflective um, songs and readings for, um, for Palm Sunday. And then on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to be here for, those are going to be short, a time of reflection, half an hour time of reflection of Holy Week. And then on Thursday, we're here for, um, to celebrate Monday, Thursday together at seven o'clock, is it? Yes, yeah, seven o'clock. We're having a Monday, Thursday meal together. Um, if you haven't signed up, we'd love you to sign up. We'd love to have you with us as we celebrate together and um, we'll be sharing Holy Communion as part of that meal. These are always lovely times and we'll be at the back of the church for that. And then on Good Friday, um, there's various things going on. If you've got children, you might want to bring them along on um, Good Friday morning to um, some, uh, craft activities, Little Gems Plus, um, from 10 till 12. Um, or you might want to join us at 9.30 to walk, down, or walk, to walk down the high street from here to Sainsbury's, where I'm going to be leading an act of worship with churches together in Paul outside Sainsbury's. And then you can go and have a... A uh, hot cross bun. If you haven't had a hot cross bun, who's had a hot cross bun this season? <laughs> well, if you haven't had one yet and you're looking forward to it, you can go to the Methodist Church and have a hot cross bun afterwards. Or well, we'll have hot cross buns here as well, won't we? I had them for my breakfast, actually. I love hot cross buns. Anyway, that's um, uh, in the morning, and then in the afternoon, we're going to be back here at two o'clock in the afternoon for an hour at the cross. That'll be a very quiet, reflective service. And then on Easter Sunday, well, Easter Saturday, we've got the small thing of a wedding, but that's fine going on in the church. But on Easter Sunday, who's getting up really early on Easter Sunday morning with me? Brian's going to be there. Agnes is going to be there. Any... 6.15, sorry, do you'll do the bacon, 6.15, 6.15, join Agnes and I and Brian at the moment, on the key, up sea music, because we're going to celebrate and wake up the community, possibly not, um, and we're going to declare to our community that Jesus is risen. So that's 6.15. Hopefully we'll see the sun come up because it's due to come up at 6.27 or something. Um, we'll, we'll do that. And we'll be back here for bacon butties and coffee. And then we're here at 9 o'clock for communion. And then we're here again at 10.30 for all age service of communion with, bapti with a baptism. We're baptising Pete at the back. Baptising Pete and Esme and Athena during that service. It's going to be a real celebration time. So, um, yeah, so that's next Sunday morning. And then I'm going to have some... Uh, then we've got an Easter egg hunt. So, what... And then I'm going to put my feet up for a week. All right? So um, that's, that's going on. Now, who's an old age, old age citizen? Who's a senior citizen? If you're a senior citizen and want to go to St John's Passion at the Lighthouse tonight, then there are two seats going free. So see me afterwards, or see Bryony afterwards for that, because Carol's not well, they can't go. Right, let's start the service properly. Please stand. Please stand. 
Obviously today on Palm Sunday, we remember Jesus riding into Jerusalem. And so we say, Jesus is coming. coming. That wasn't very shouty, was it? We'll try again. Jesus is coming. He's riding on a donkey. Open the gates. Open the ancient doors. Don't be afraid. Wave the branches. Spread out your coats. Peace in heaven. Glory in the highest heaven. So we're going to baptise Pete and um, their family or their girls next week. Um, But last week we baptised Shannon and her four children um, after the service on Sunday morning. And it was a really beautiful occasion. And um, they were coming back today to be welcomed, but they were in Liverpool yesterday. So Shannon has driven through the night with her children to get here for this morning, but the children are in bed. (laughs) So we're going to welcome them next week at our service, but Shannon's here, so do you want to come and we'll welcome you. Very brave. (laughs) You don't look that tired. Did, Did Chris drive? Yeah, good. (laughs) Okay, so this is Shannon. (laughs) You're fine. So we're going to welcome Shannon into the family of the church. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not stop them. We thank God for Shannon and her family who were baptized last week. Christ loves them and welcomes them into his church. So I ask you all, will you support Shannon as she begins her journey of faith? Will you help her live and grow within God's family? There is one Lord, one faith, but uh, one baptism by one spirit, Shannon. We were all baptized into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly father. We welcome you. Welcome. Thank you. Can I have a hug? <laughs> we'll do the same next week with your children. So-
So, we're now going to um, say our pr baptism anniversary prayer for those who've been baptised in April over the last few years. Is anybody here who was baptised in April? No. So we need to light our baptism anniversary candle. Who wants to light the candle today? Esme and Gracie. What a surprise. Come on, girls. They don't let me down, these girls. What does let me down? Oh, there's some matches there. Okay, girls, who's doing it? It's getting a bit low, isn't it? Can you reach? I can't actually see what you're doing. Are you there? Yay! Oh, as we could have blown that out, never mind. Thank you, girls. So let's say together the prayer, our baptism anniversary prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for all the children baptised this month in the past years. We thank you that you love them and have accepted them as part of your family. We pray that they may continue to grow in loving and following you. And we pray that you would continue to bless them, their parents and families. In the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Gracie, I have to say, your trousers are absolutely amazing today. If you haven't spotted, she's got palm leaves on her trousers. Well fitted for today's occasions. You haven't noticed, have you? No. Well, as we're preparing to many celebrations, and we've got one special one coming up in May. If you've got any idea what, we, what we're celebrating in May, the big one, you know, with the crown and... Yeah, King Charles' coronation. So I thought I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some funny facts today about celebrations. And Gracie, following with your, with your trousers, there is a very long-standing tradition on the outfits for um, the monarch to be wearing. But Charles has actually decided to ditch this tradition. Do you know what it is to do with his outfit that he's changing? No, so he is ditching the stocking the silk stockings that they used to wear, and, and the breeches, and he is replacing it with um, much modern, his military uniform. So there you go, following with the trousers. I mean, it was, it was really, really interesting finding all the facts about coronation. So, as you know, any operation that's on that scale has got a special name, right? So lots of people involved, you know, lots of security issues, so the, na the code name for the, for the coronation is Operation Golden Orb. Golden Orb. Yeah. So, can you give me any estimate of how many guests are expected to be in Westminster Abbey? 2,000. 2,000, yes. 2,000 guests are invited. Has anyone made a cut? No, not here, no. <laughs> do you know how we're going to all celebrate? What are we going to do for the coronation? What have, you, have you got any plans? Street parties? Anything else? No, the, the very interesting fact I found out that all the pubs and bars are actually allowed to be open for extra two hours on Friday and Saturday. But the key is not going to be quiet, past 11. <laughs> and we're going to have a concert and a laser show at Windsor Palace on Sunday. Yes. Well, I've got Windsor Palace, Windsor Palace, Windsor Castle, yes, that's the one. And also, on a Sunday, if any of you are um, involved with any sort of charity work, Monday is a great day to go out and show it, because we've got the Big Help, Big Help Out initiative on a Monday. 
So I'm sure you will see lots of volunteers out and about. So give them a wave. I think lots of scouts are going to be out and about. I think I'm taking that day off. Um, <laughs> and it's expected for 27 million people just in UK to be watching it online. Right, the emblem. Do you remember the purple one we had for Queen's Jubilee? Do you know what is on the emblem for the coronation? I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. It is to do with the, f with, with the flowers. Right? With the flowers. So we've got four flowers representing four nations. Thistle. Yes, the thistle for Scotland. Scotland. Lo Rose for England. Daffodil for Wales and and the shamrock for Ireland. Well done, that's the one. And they all shaped beautifully in a shape of the St. Edward's crown that's going to be used for the coronation. Do you know how much it weighs? The crown, the St. Edward's crown. It's made out of solid gold and it weighs well, I give you both for the new and the old. So it's four pounds and 12 ounces or two kilograms in new money. Two kilograms on his head. Yeah. <laughs> right, so how many horses does the household cavalry has got on their books? It's a hundred. It's a one hundred horses. And why right, this is this is for all the all the passionate of um, cars. How many cars does the king has in his in the um, in his what is called the royal yeah fleets fleet, royal fleets five. Do you know the makes of them? So he's got, yeah, he's got three Rolls Royces with you and two Bentleys. So he's, he's going to be making his way from the Buckingham um, Palace to the Westminster Abbey in one of them. And how is he going to be coming back? In a Golden State coach. And how many horses are going to pull that one? Eight? Eight, well done, it's going to be eight Windsor Great Horses. There you go, some cool, cool facts to know about the coronations. Why, Claire, would you like to read the story and let's see how we can relate those interesting facts to the story that we've got for today. <laughs> Our story is entitled, The Great Parade. Let's go to Jerusalem, said Jesus to his friends. I have something important to do there. And so they went. And when they could just see the city from a nearby hillside, Jesus said, let's have a parade. Jesus' friends were surprised. A parade, they wondered. Why a parade? But no one said anything because Jesus was already busy giving instructions. I want two of you to borrow a donkey, he said. Tell the owner, I need it. He'll understand. When the two friends returned with the donkey, Jesus hopped on its back, gently nudged its sides and started down the hill. His friends followed close behind. Hooray for Jesus, they shouted. Jesus is king. Down, down, down the road they went towards the city gate. The closer they got, the more people joined them. It's Jesus the teacher, someone called. It's Jesus the healer, called someone else. Three cheers for Jesus, called one and all. Soon there were people everywhere, marching along with the parade and shouting from the roadside. Some took off their coats and laid them in front of the donkey. Others cut palm branches from the trees and waved them about. There were hundreds, maybe thousands clapping and dancing and shouting their way through the city gates. Everyone was happy. Well, almost everyone. 
Some of the religious leaders didn't like Jesus. They were jealous because the ordinary people were so fond of him. And when they saw the parade, they frowned. Wait just a minute, they called. You can't have a parade here. Tell your friends to be quiet, Jesus. But Jesus just laughed. Tell them to be quiet? Impossible. Then he turned and looked at the crowd. Can't you see, he said, there is so much happiness here that even if I could make the people quiet, the stones in the street would jump up and shout for joy. Thank you, Claire. So our next song, um, John said to me he'd never played this one in church before. It's great. I've challenged him. But there are some actions, so I need all the children up the front to help me do the actions. Agnes, Esme, Gracie, anybody else want to come up the front? Okay. So, you'll all know the tune, but the actions are, we have a king, so you're wearing a crown, who rides a donkey. Can you do riding a donkey? Can we all do this? They don't look convinced. <laughs> all stand up because you're all going to have a go. If you can stand up, if you can, if you're able. <laughs> Even Caroline's not reluctant. Okay, so we have a king who rides a donkey. We have a king who rides a donkey. We have a king who rides a donkey. And his name is Jesus, okay? Jesus the King is risen, Jesus the King is risen, Jesus the King is risen early in the morning, or something like that, okay? Troops are waving a royal welcome, and then we have a king who cares for people, okay? Should we have a go? Yep. I don't think you really need your words, because <laughs> you can do your actions without your words. I'll shout out the words. to have the crown put on his head in golden orb to, um, to become king. And Jesus went into Jerusalem to declare he, that he was a king as well. And as I was thinking about the two, I thought, well, they're really different, aren't they? Really, really different. And the difference helps us to think why Jesus, what Jesus was all about. So let's have a think about it first. So we were told that um, he would come back once he'd got a crown on his head, or he'd been had, I don't know whether he's going to wear the crown in, in the coach. I'm not sure he can keep it on that long. 
Once he's got the crown on his head, anyway, once he's been made king, he will ride in the gold coach with how many horses? Eight horses. It's a very grand mode of transport, isn't it? It says, I'm really important, doesn't it? It declares that he is the king who will rule over us. It declares that actually he is really special. But Jesus didn't come in a grand coach or even in a Rolls Royce or even in those days it would have been a great big white charger of a horse, wouldn't it, if he was going to be the sort of king like King Charles is going to be, who would rule over us. But he came on a... He came on a donkey. And in those days, if a king came on a big white horse, it was a sign that he was going to be a mighty, powerful king. He would be a king who would really bring terror and rule over people. But if a king came on a donkey, it shows that he was coming in peace. That Jesus came to say, do you know what? I'm coming as a king, but I'm coming as a different sort of king. I'm not going to rule over you with terror, but I've come to bring peace. Not necessarily peace in their country, but peace in our hearts. So Jesus came on a donkey to show that he was a prince, a king of peace. I love donkeys. We've all been getting ready, haven't we, for um, the coronation. Um, if you want to, you can buy this lovely piece of bunting. I got this picture from a net from a, a on Google from a bunting seller. You can have we can have bunting all round celebrating the coronation. Everybody's getting ready. Everybody knows that it's happening on May the sixth. Thank you. When I go up to London on May the third for the, for the royal garden party. <laughs> I'm very excited. When I go up on to London to the Royal Garden Party, the streets will be full of flags. Everybody will be ready, won't they? They'll be ready because the coronation is happening. Everybody will be excited and ready for it. Because we've known about this for such a long time. But when Jesus came into the to Jerusalem, and there were, the, the streets were crowded because it was the Passover festival, but they weren't quite expecting that Jesus was going to come at that point. They'd heard rumours, they'd read in their scriptures that the promised Messiah would come at some time riding a donkey, but they weren't expecting it to happen then and there. And it was Jesus' followers who came in and they realised that something was special was happening when they saw Jesus on the donkey and they were the ones who started waving those palm branches. They weren't expecting it, but as soon as people saw the palm branches waving, they realised that this was exciting, that this guy was something special, that this Jesus was coming to bring something amazing. And so... They laid their palm branches in front of him. They took their coats off and they laid it to say, You are the king. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're so special, Jesus. We want you to be our king, they shouted. But later on, they weren't to shout that, were they? A week later, what were they shouting instead? crucified, get rid of him, kill him, crucify, because he wasn't the sort of king that they expected. And then our king's going to have this put on, isn't he? He's going to have this enormous two kilogram crown put on his head. It's beautiful, it's full of jewels. It must be worth a fortune. It's a beautiful crown 
as a symbol of his authority, a symbol of his power. Did Jesus wear a crown like that? Jesus, a few days later, was wearing a crown like this, a crown of thorns. He was mocked for being the king. But his crown showed that he had the power and authority to, the power and authority to forgive sins, to cleanse us from all the things we've ever done wrong. Because that's what he did on the cross. He died so that you and I could be forgiven for all the things we've ever done. And he rose again to give us new life. That's what his kingship was about. This is Queen Elizabeth sat on the amazing throne in Westminster Abbey. And Prince <coughs> King Charles, King Charles will be sat on that amazing throne too. A throne which has seen so many centuries of people crowned as king or queen of our country. What throne is Jesus moved day? He's asking us to let him be part of our lives. He wants to come into each and every one of our hearts. He wants us to know him as king of our lives. That's the throne that he's after. He's after your heart. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know that amazing forgiveness that he gives us. He wants you to know the new life by the power of his Holy Spirit. He wants you, this Easter, to reconnect with him and to know that you have opened once more your heart to him. That's the throne that he wants to sit on this Easter. That's a challenge to each and every one of us. Amen. So as we think about that, we're going to um, dedicate our palms to be a sign for us. We do this every year. It's not because they become very special, but we ask God's blessing upon them that they come, that they are a sign for us for the year of just that that we've actually asked Jesus to be part of our lives. And we can remember that each day as we see our palms. You might want to put them on your kitchen worktop or um, stick them on your kitchen cupboard or put them beside your bed so when you wake up every morning you see it and you can remember that Jesus is part of your life. So I invite you all to stand. And I invite you all to hold up your palms. And I'm going to say a prayer. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we've been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration and union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love so that united with him and his sufferings we may share his risen life. God, our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered into Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna.
Please be seated. You know how hard it is when you sometimes come up with an idea? Well, this is my idea for today. Ooh. I've got a palm. And I've got some palm leaves. So there's a palm trunk and some leaves. So what I'm going to ask you today, and Claire, my glamorous assistant, is going to help me. <laughs> right. If I hold one for a minute, and I'll pass it on to music group. They might need one more. So those palm leaves, right, they don't quite look as glamorous as the ones in Lucy's picture, but that's the ones we can write off. I want you guys to keep circulating those as we pray, and I'll tell you with each one what to write. If you don't want to write anything, you can just draw a picture. It could be even something as simple as a smiley face for a celebration. Anything you want. It could be one word, it could be anything else. But as we go through the prayers, I'm just going to ask you to keep circulating those and writing, oh, I'll pass at this end, there we go. And then write something and pass it on to the person next to you and then hopefully they'll come back with your with the next piece of your of the prayers. And let's hope by the end of it we'll get to put it together into um, a palm tree. <laughs> so let's just give um, Claire a moment whilst the leaves make their way round. So, merciful God, as we enter the Holy Week, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem and to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Stir up within us the gift of faith that we may not only praise him with our lips, but also may follow him in the way of the cross. So, as the first thing, we will think about those things that have not gone great in the past week. Times we might not have been nice. So on those palm leaves, I'm gonna ask you to write something that you might not be happy about. Something that might something that you are not happy about. And it could be if you don't want to write anything, you can just do a picture of a sad face or anything that is heavy on your heart for this, for this past week. And then once you've done it, please pass your leave over to the next person. So we pray, Lord, on this day, you entered the rebellious city that later rejected you. We confess that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem, that our faith is often more show than substance, that our hearts are in need of cleansing. We are sorry for the, things, for the wrong things we said. We are sorry for the wrong, wrong things we've done. We are sorry we have not been a friend as we wish to be. Lord, we trust you to forgive us Heal what is broken and show us the right way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So now we're going to pray for the world, for the things we watch on the news that are heavy on our hearts and that we trust that while we share this prayer together today, you help to guide others in finding solutions. So please write on the palm leaves those things that worry you the situation that you entrust in the Lord. Triumphant Lord, we rejoice in your entry into the world and into our lives. Joining with the crowds, we sing your praises and exalt your reign. But even so, our hearts are far from true worship. Our minds are distant from true understanding. We are disappointed with our humility. We are unsurprised so uninspired by your, by your selfness, selflessness. 
Our sin lead us to give you death even though you have given us life. Our teacher gives us the war even though you call for peace. And we pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and those that have been forced to move. We pray to guide the world leaders in finding resolution to this conflict and peace for the region. Lord, we bring to you people in Turkey and Syria as they start to rebuild their broken families and they hope for home and safety among the ruins of their hometowns. Lord, we pray for the end of the gun violence in the United States. We pray for safety of the children so they can join their friends at school without a fear and worry. We also pray for those affected by the recent tornado and so they can find shelter in you and help in their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. So as Jesus entered Jerusalem, people celebrated. What are you looking forward to celebrate? Birthdays, anniversary? Any plans for your street parties for coronation? Please write anything, anything that comes to your mind that you wish to celebrate. Jesus Christ, you come to fulfill the law and not to abolish it. That's why you offered yourself as a sacrifice Passover lamb. You rode on a donkey as a symbol of triumph and victory as you delivered yourself to your enemies. Help us to join with the families and friends as we celebrate the new life this Easter, the new life you have given us, but also the beauty of the spring, beautiful flowers waking up in the sun, animals preparing their homes to welcome little babies. Lord, Lord keep safe those who prepare their homes with spring cleaning and decorating jobs. Also, help us to bring our country together as we prepare to celebrate the coronation of King Charles and watch over the royal family during these tense times. Bring us home again and impart within us the new song of joy and celebration. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And now for the last one. Please keep passing the palm leaves and please write anything that you are thankful for, anything that you are glad you have in your life. Jesus Christ, we come before you with thanksgiving as we celebrate Palm Sunday. It's the day we commemorate your entry into Jerusalem on a mission to pay for our sins and to give us eternal life. You knew the anguish awaiting you and you still proceeded so that your Father's will would be fulfilled. Your love and obedience saved us and now we are citizens of God. Lord, we thank you for the amazing words of teachers who can finally rest after a very long school term. We thank you for our doctors and nurses who look after us when we are poorly. Jesus, we thank you for the work of local charities, Roots to Roots, Food Bank, Smile, Thank you for all the volunteers giving up their time to support those in need. And Lord, we thank you for our friends. We thank you for our colleagues at work. And we thank you for each other, for this amazing group of people here meeting every Sunday, for singing your praises and to listening to your teaching to be part of your church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So how are your palm leaves coming together? If I could, Gracie and Esme, could you help me and go and collect all those leaves together for me, please? And bring them over here. If I can have... Hmm? Yeah, right my little bit, yes. We've got the other policy in writing, cool. Well, hopefully, as we put our prayers together on those palm leaves, we um, We'll create something here, our lovely palm tree of prayers for, um, for the Holy Week. Oh, lovely, thank you. Right, and we put them, as the girls collecting theirs, so we start putting them here together. There we go. Thank you. 
Right, now, are they going to hold? Are they going to hold, girls? Mm. I've got a stapler and tape. Nope. As we leave them creating the palm tree, we'll okay. say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's coming together very beautifully. Lots of lovely prayers there. Lots of children's interaction by the look of it. Fabulous. Some more coming up. So we're going to um, stand for our final song. Now, John didn't know this, which probably means that... Did anybody else know it? Did you know it? You learnt it on Thursday. I can't believe you didn't know this. Okay, so we're going to sing this. Who knows King of Kings and Lord of Lords, glory, hallelujah. Caroline does. Okay, Pete, Pete does. Fabulous. Okay, right. Shall we sing it through? Shall the choir um, music group stand up and sing it through? Because you need to learn it because it gets faster and faster. Okay. I haven't yet decided how I'm going to stop this. <laughs> I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. okay, we'll do it first, you do it first, and then okay. we'll stand up and join you, and then we'll get faster and faster as we repeat it. So we repeat it faster. Yeah. <laughs> Just carry on. Just carry on. Yeah. Have a go. 
this morning by thinking, by singing these songs which are so uplifting, we've got a sense of, well, perhaps even just a tiny sense of what it might have been like to have rid- been with Jesus on the morning going into Jerusalem, walking down the hill and up. And as he did that, he walked past the Garden of Gethsemane, a place where he would have spent time praying just before he went back into Jerusalem to the cross. And this week we journey with Jesus. We journey with hope because we know the ending. But we journey with faith, exploring again the amazing truth of his death on the cross for each and every one of us because he loves each and every one of us. But he rose again to give us life. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please do stay for a cup of tea or coffee after the service.